I said to Dave, if you're going to follow Jay Leno at 1230 when Jay gets The Tonight Show, you're going to hate yourself. You're going to be miserable. You're going to think, why am I following Jay Leno when I, for 12 years, hosted the 1230 show and I did a good show, my reward should be The Tonight Show. Well, it doesn't, life doesn't always work that way. If you're a good boy and you behave, you don't always get rewarded for it because somebody else is going to do it their way. Uh, so I prepared him by saying, you don't want to follow 1230, and if you agree, I'll try and get you an 1130 show. Uh, not knowing when I said that how I was going to do that. Uh, that's why it was a whole new chapter in my life because I was promising him 1130, not knowing how I was going to do it. Uh, it meant, it turned out, it meant playing with the big boys meaning heads of networks and heads of studios, uh, which is not my strength. I'm not a political animal. Uh, I just like to put on a good show. And I'm not an entrepreneur. Uh, so the man who had written uh, Dave's contract at NBC was a lawyer from Indianapolis who was not a show business lawyer who had made a very bad deal for Dave and in it in the deal it said if he doesn't get the Tonight Show uh, NBC will pay him a million dollars well to him that was terrific uh, so they gladly would pay Dave off with a million dollars, and they put in Jay Leno. Uh, at that point, I was still with Carson, uh, but said I would get him an 11.30 show. Uh, Bill Carter of the New York Times wrote a book about this phase of late night because it really was the late night wars at that time. Uh, it was a very, very scary period in my life because I would sit, well, first of all, I had to get him an agent. So the biggest agent in town at that point was Mike Ovitz. There was no one more powerful than Mike Ovitz. Uh, I knew from friends who were at CAA that Mike Ovitz was a man who could dazzle people but didn't always know how to deliver what he was selling people. So I said to Dave, we got to get you an agent or a manager but it has to be somebody really powerful because you don't have that. So I said, do you want me to set up a meeting with Mike Ovitz? And he said, yeah, I'm willing to do that. But I said, you've got to accept the fact that a lot of what he's going to tell you is bullshit. He's just there to dazzle you. And he said, that's all right, I, 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 I understand. So we had a meeting with Mike Ovitz, and Mike Ovitz put on an unbelievable performance. And when we left, Dave, Dave was giggling like a like a high school girl, saying, "Oh my God! Oh my God!" Uh, uh, I met the Godfather. And I said, yeah, but don't believe everything he told you. He can't do all those things that he said he could do for you. 
And he said, I don't care. This this man's amazing. And I'm, let's, so we went to my house. We talked about it. And he said, if you think he's the one that can get me an 1130 show, uh, we should go with him. And I said, well, he probably can get us the 1130 show because he knows how to play these games. Uh, so that's when that period started where we would have meetings. We weren't to negotiate, allowed to negotiate any deals while he was under contract to NBC. But we were allowed to meet with people as long as we didn't do any negotiating. So we met, you know, with Rupert Murdoch. We met with Howard Stringer. We met with the Brandon Tartikoff. We met with we met with all top film studios, top syndicators, and top network people. Individual meetings. One time. <laughs> Now, all of this was slightly illegal. You could meet with them, but you couldn't talk business with them. So I remember that Dave and Robert Morton and I had dinner at uh, Wolfgang Puck's restaurant in Malibu while we were in discussions with all these people. And up comes, walking up to our table, comes Warren Littlefield, who was at that time president of NBC Entertainment. And we were like schoolboys being caught. What are you guys doing here? And oh, we're just, you know, we're just uh, having dinner and it's, well, what's going on? And so we felt like he had caught us because we were scheming. <laughs> And we were very <laughs> unnerved by it all. Uh, but these meetings went on and on, and these people were offering fantastic deals to us, and we had to pick the right one. Thanks to Mike Ovitz's power, these people all came to us with and were competing with each other uh, with, with offers. Uh, you know, where CBS even offered us that we would own the 12.30 show. It, not only the 11.30 show would be owned by Letterman, but the 12.30 show what, that would follow would be owned by us. So we had to make a decision uh, who to go with, whether to go with a syndicator, whether to go with a film studio, whether to go with a network. And Dave and I, both being old-fashioned broadcasting people, didn't really like syndication because you have no control over what station in the market you're going to be on. You don't have real control over what precedes you or follows you. Uh, so even though Viacom offered us the, by far the highest deal, the biggest deal, we preferred to go with a network. So we met with ABC. The problem there was Nightline was on at 11.30, and at one point, ABC actually offered us uh, the 11.30 slot on ABC, but I got scared because I thought the uh, reaction from the audience would be that we kicked off Nightline, which was you know, the last quality show in late night, and I said, I it's going to backfire. I, I don't think we should do it. So then they offered us uh, 12 o'clock on ABC, and I had promised Dave 11.30. So that eliminated ABC. Uh, Fox, through Murdoch, you know, offered us some 
big financial deal, but I didn't feel secure going on Fox. Uh, so that left CBS, and the problem with CBS was it was an old demographic. They didn't have any young demographics on CBS. Uh, and station clearances were a big, major problem because they had no late night programming before Letterman except uh, some re rerun dramas. Uh, so we had a, a tough decision to make. Uh, Howard Stringer, I thought, was very impressive and made us feel very good. So we went with CBS, which many people thought was a stupid idea because you don't have a, you're not going to get a young audience on CBS, and you're not going to have any station clearances, but. I decided to, to take that gamble, and we went with CBS. Uh, 